Hi everyone, Clive Bowden here. Firstly, I would like to thank Court for organising this get-together and also inviting me to speak. I hope that what I have to say will be taken in the spirit intended. Sounds ominous, doesn't it? Secondly, a little about myself. Now, Court, this is historical. Although I earned myself a PhD in physics, it seems I was fated to take up software engineering beginning in 1984 with ADA. I was soon into modelling techniques and languages, initially all in the structured world. Then I met Stephen in 1987 at Cadre in Baltimore, Rhode Island, where I received my first meaningful introduction to object-oriented thinking. Since those early days, I guess I can summarise my combined industrial and academic career as being concerned with effective practice of systems and software engineering based on good theory. I see this talk as a message that could, but shouldn't, be ignored. The message can be captured fully by both listening to me rabbit on and reading the slides. It seems appropriate to start with a definition to help set the scene. Here's one from Natalia Stevchenko from the Software Engineering Institute. In my humble opinion, she does a rather good job of paraphrasing the more detailed software engineering body of knowledge definition of model-based systems engineering. Great definition, but I feel bound to add that from my own experience, model-based systems engineering is much about design and less about conceptualization. Oh my God, I just thought, perhaps some of you are not aware of the fact that the Object Management Group, OMG, has a deep interest in creating specifications for model-based systems engineering languages, typically using UML as a basis, of course. Well, they have. The current state of play is very interesting and I think mature. It centres on the coalescence of three major artefacts or endeavours, they being Systems Modelling Language, SysML for short, the Unified Architecture Framework, my dog says WAF for short, and ISO 42010 for Systems and Software Engineering Architecture Descriptions, for 2010 for short. Hands up who knows all these. Although I've used the word coalescence, each of the three artefacts can be used separately. So what's the relationship between these three artefacts? ISO 42010 is effectively a meta model that underpins both the SysML and the Unified Architectural Framework. As you might make out from the slide, 42010 expresses the various relationships surrounding architectural descriptions using UML class diagrams, obviously appropriate for a meta model. The Unified Architecture Framework artifacts are typically described or constructed using SysML. 42010 is not essential to using executable translatable UML since proper evaluation of domains and bridges pretty much sorts out architectural matters. And of course we know that SysML is not essential to executable and translatable UML. The Unified Architecture Framework, UAF, has evolved to what it is today over three decades and is used mostly in the context of large enterprise systems, originally only defence systems. It comprises a dozen domains or viewpoints relevant to large enterprises. The Unified Architecture Framework may help with thinking or identifying some very significant areas of concern that have to be addressed, areas of concern typically requiring particular expertise, language, methods, and involving lifetime careers. When you add to that all the possible views associated with each domain or viewpoint, and also think about cross-cutting concerns, a god-awful mess can easily develop. A mess that not even executable translatable UML could help sort out. Nonetheless, I am convinced that executable translatable UML would do a much better job than SysML, the adopted modelling language for expressing things UAF. Actually, 
SysML is likely the weakest link in the chain of modeling stuff that has been created for model-based systems engineering. Whilst it does have some of the same diagrams as executable translatable UML, even a couple more, SysML lacks the glue that makes executable translatable UML superior and more obviously workable. I am forever puzzled about the need to have a requirements diagram within a modeling language, especially if you have five to 10,000 of them, requirements that is. A good modeler could perhaps ignore the very design-oriented block definition diagram and internal block diagram combination, but I cannot see how they can ignore the lack of an inherent method that encourages a pattern of thought that makes a lot of sense through the support of formally and usefully connected diagrams. OMG could have done this. Instead, it seems that they decided that total flexibility was most important. I don't know of any normally spoken or written human languages that don't possess a grammar, but that may be because I'm an illiterate. Obviously, the form of a modeling language is of prime importance regarding model-based systems engineering. Unfortunately, the poor form of a modeling language leads to prime impotence. I suspect SysML suffers the latter. Attention to good form in a modeling language helps create the three pillars of the model-based systems engineering practice into an effective, faceted profession and not remain as three independent obelisks of specialization. However, modeling methods and tools can only provide the greatest benefit if the form of the language provides the wiring to encourage methodical efficiency and easily repeatable production. Unfortunately, it seems that the systems engineering community has simply accepted the notion that model-based systems engineering tools should be method agnostic. But none of the tools seem to support anything by way of obvious diagram connection, instantiation and flow that in any way supports the concept of a method that could effectively be used for model development, execution and or verification. Many tools describe, or should I say market, model execution and or verification. But in most cases, modelers are left to do the hard work of say, programming execution scripts, etc outside the bounds of the modeling language. I know of perhaps one exception, but otherwise nothing I've read or seen over the years encourages me to believe that model execution and verification is done well, especially when compared to the same facets within, say, the bridge point implementation of executable UML, with which I am most familiar. I could stop here and rest my case. You might say, great, now we can go down to the pub to shoot the breeze on Bridgepoint, or even IUML. My stories on both are mostly positive. But I haven't got to the punchline yet, and anyway, besides that, in the style of a famous Australian poet by the name of Banjo Patterson, I need to say, there's movement at the station, for word has got around that OMG is out to play. Statements such as these had brought to light a burgeoning dislike for SysML among systems engineers. I guess I'm happy that my views are confirmed. <clears throat> Fortunately may not be the right word, but anyway the criticism were taken seriously so that over the last five years a great deal of activity has occurred to introduce a significantly better version of at least SysML to enable inherent method as well as executability and verification capabilities via the language, among many other things. By the way, there has been significant improvements made to UAF as well. There's lots of stuff on the web about SysML version 2. Things are ready for tool providers to start implementing what seems to be a significant advancement on previous offerings. Effective tools should be available within two years. Of course, these tools need to be in tune with the form of the new SysML version 2 language. If not, then there's no threat to executable translatable UML in terms of its superiority. Even so, there may be opportunities for the Shyamala community arising from the SysML version 2 efforts. This short list only touches the surface 
of possibilities. Is it back to the future? The fact that the motto on this 30-year-old sign remains true seems to suggest so. By effectively addressing the three pillars of model-based systems engineering based on a very well thought out integrative language, Schleiermeller clearly fits within the model-based systems engineering realm, a realm that didn't exist 30 years ago. However, the Schleiermeller community cannot sit back and rest on the laurels of Schleier and Meller's far-sightedness and conceptual brilliance. We need to stay current, clarify our position within, and identify new opportunities arising from the model-based systems engineering realm.